Hello everybody, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. I think the title of this video will be Zero Tolerance of Hate. You know, I've observed um, so much hatred in the world. Uh, it's all over YouTube and even uh, apart from YouTube, just uh, in life as a whole, uh, it seems like so many people have so much hatred in their heart. It seems that for many people it's very easy to hate. It seems to come naturally to them to hate. And that's very unfortunate and, and I cannot change people's hearts. Um, if you put your faith in Jesus as your Savior, Jesus puts the Holy Spirit into you and the Holy Spirit begins to transform you and it's my hope that the Holy Spirit will change your heart from a heart filled with hate to a heart filled with love. But uh, until that happens, I have to be able to function in my life and I have to be able to um, interact with people and I'm I know that I do not want to interact with hateful people so I have a, a zero tolerance rule for hatefulness uh, any person in the world it doesn't matter if you're my oldest friend or within my family or a friend of mine on YouTube or a stranger who is uh, making your first contact with me. If you want to communicate with me in a hateful manner, do not expect any reaction from me except to block you and shun you and ignore you. So if you're trying to get a reaction out of me so that I will respond in kind and uh, I'm not going to stoop to that level. So, just be prepared uh, if anybody wants to communicate with me with a hateful uh, manner, then uh, uh, you will be blocked and, uh, and then and ignored in the future. But um, I want to talk today about, about love. And Love is what uh, we should have on our heart as Christians. Let me tell you a story of a person that uh, uh, is a, was a, a friend of mine. and He was a relative. And he's, he's been deceased for about eight or ten years now. And he, he is with the Lord. Um, he and I had... Uh, numerous private conversations about Jesus and he understood this free gift of salvation and he believed on Jesus so I'm confident he's with the Lord and I will uh, look forward to seeing him again in the kingdom of God but this particular person uh, was attending a, a um, kind of a class that I was uh, I was teaching on how to set goals and when it came time for people to um, um, tell us the goals that they set and the plan that they they had to achieve these goals um, his goal was was surprisingly simply to be a nice person and I said well I think that's very, very nice, very sweet, but but that's not really the uh, the purpose of this this class. It, we want you to set goals so that you can achieve something in a career or financially or something in your life that you're you're uh, want to achieve, achieve and a plan, a step by step plan to follow until you reach it, your goal. And he simply said, "Well, my only goal is just to be a nice person." And I was, uh, 
I thought that was kind of a kind of a, a way out of the uh, of what we were trying to accomplish in the class. But years have passed now, and reflecting back on that, uh, I, I am now amazed of the, the beauty and simplicity of that goal. To be a nice person. And I want to say, say, brother, and if you can hear me now, I, you, you achieved that goal. Yes. He's one of the nicest people I've ever known. But a nice person should be a common thing. Uh, unfortunately, it's, it's harder and harder to, to, to find. It's, it's a rare but wonderful quality, but rare. So, um, to be a nice person, you know, I think that uh, one of the primary things we, we have to have is a loving attitude. So, I want to I want to look at some of the scriptures that tell us about love. Let's start off with 1 John 4, 8. It says, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. God is love. And this scripture says that we don't know God, who is love, if we are not a loving person. So I guess we should all really give that a lot, of, meditate a lot on that verse. Do we have love in our hearts? Do we really know God? Are we really being influenced by the Holy Spirit of God transforming us into this loving person that God wants us to be? Let's look at Romans 5, 8. It says, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This is one of the great love verses in, in the whole Bible. It uh, tells us that God loved us so much in spite of our sinfulness. Even while we were sinners, God loved us so much that he was prepared to have his son, Jesus Christ, die for our sins. That's how much God loved us. What an example that he would love us in spite of our sinful nature and our sinful acts and our sinful thoughts. And yet, he still loved us. Maybe the most famous verse in the Bible is John 3.16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Bible really is a love story. It's a, it tells us about the love of God for his creation and the the crowning glory of God's creation is mankind. It says, For God so loved the world. God loves all of us in the world. He loves us so much that He gave His Son, Jesus Christ, and it, to die on a cross, to pay for our sins. And whoever will put their faith in Jesus Christ will not perish. You will not suffer the second death in the lake of fire. Instead, you will have everlasting life in the kingdom of God in heaven. So if you've never done that, if you're watching this video now, I hope you will put your faith in Jesus and receive everlasting life. Let's look at John 15, 13. Greater love hath no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends. Jesus said that. He said, there is no greater life than being willing to sacrifice your life for your friends. And he was describing how much he loved us and that he was willing to lay down his life on the cross for us. What an example of the ultimate love, the ultimate sacrifice 
loving us so much that he would go to that cross for us. And then if we look at Matthew 22, verse 36 says, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So Jesus summed up everything that God really wants, out, wants from mankind in these commands. Love God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. Well, I don't believe anybody's ever been able to succeed at doing that except Jesus Christ himself. I don't think we've ever loved God with our whole heart, mind, and soul. and I don't think we've ever loved our neighbors equally as much as we love ourselves. But that's what Jesus asks us to do. He commands us to do that. So, if you want to know uh, what uh, all the laws and commandments are reduced to, it's simply love. Now let's look at what's called the love chapter of the Bible. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 13. This is the Apostle Paul writing, If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. I don't know. Maybe that's the most beautiful chapter in the scriptures. This should tell all of us the importance, the priority that love should be in our life. Let's look next at 
Philippians 4.8. I've always loved this part of scriptures because this is telling us where our mind should be. Our mind should not be on hateful things, tearing down others, calling people hateful names, doing hateful things. Our mind should be on love and as Paul says in Philippians 4 8, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, Think on these things. I pray that everyone will give this uh, a lot of thought, meditate on these verses, and pray that love will be the predominant quality in your life. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.